ピーカーの方は、えー、ウォーレン・アーバクルさんですどうぞよろしくお願いします Good morning I'm going to do this one in English Are you okay for that? Okay So this morning I'd like to talk about this global player which is what I call another option and we're going to talk about this 日本の常識世界の非常識<笑> or common sense and I think you'll find that a lot of people are studying English and the common sense that we use is different just a quick introduction I came from Canada in 1983 to Japan to do judo and I don't do it anymore you can tell <笑> and these are my three sons but that's when they were cute now they're very big and I work as a consultant for communication strategies. And Japan business is going global. Everything's going global. But with poor English, people say they're komatteru, right? And there's a lot of problems. Losses of clients, there's mistakes on projects. And this is not just Japan, but Brazil, China, Colombia, France. All these countries have difficulties. And we talk about global business. We think about TOEIC usually in Japan. Is English more than TOEIC? Is it really enough? A friend of mine's company did a survey and they found that 61% of these people working in a gaishke using English are struggling. Here's a struggle from my point of view, from the gaijin point of view. We see Japanese sometimes as a mystery box. Japanese are well educated, hard workers, great quality, but they're very quiet and very little facial expression. And so a lot of foreigners ask, why are Japanese so quiet? Why don't they talk to us? It's confusing, very, very confusing. And this is what I want to talk about here is joshiki, ki joshiki. In Japan, don't be so direct. Wait for others to respond, be thoughtful. Team first, you second. But in the West, in global business, it's talking about sharing your thoughts. And I've trained over 30,000 people in 16 years, not teaching English, but teaching business skills. And what I find the difference between people who can speak and communicate is if they can work overseas. But this is very difficult for all of us to do, right? Let me give you an example. I worked with a woman in a foreign bank, and the first thing she said to me was, first, I want to apologize for my poor English. And I said, stop, 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 you can't do that. It's hijoshiki, in English, right? But in Japanese, it's perfect. Japan's got to change. You can't apologize. Being humble, herikudaru koto is good, good in English too, but there's a level. Too much is no good. It becomes strange, and then we think that you're not confident. Maybe you can't do your job. So I taught her to say this my English is good enough. This is important. You can study grammar, conversation, all that, but there are other options. How do you develop trust? How do you develop a relationship? These are the keys for business and just for life. So, what's expected? Perfect English? No. Participation? Yes. Look at this picture. You see these kids here? They're participating. They're going after the ball. But this one here, he's just standing and he's watching. He's not touching the ball. You got to touch the ball. It's the same in English when you speak to people, you communicate. Business is a sport, it's a global sport. And the rules are key. There's local rules, like Japan rules, and there's global rules. Remember when Japan beat South Africa in rugby? Did they go, I'm sorry, I want to apologize for my poor rugby. Did they do that? No, you don't do that. There's unwritten rules that you need to understand. Sharing your thoughts without being asked. And this, if you're silent, that means I understand. That means I agree. This doesn't work in global business. It sends a confusing message. Participation is a skill that we all learn. How to give your opinion, how to ask questions, how to give feedback, timing. These are things that we can learn. 
We learn these overseas when we go to a foreign country, but we need to start learning them in Japan. Why do I focus on business? Because when you work in English, you have to produce a result. If you're on holidays or with friends, it doesn't matter, it's easy. But there's a lot of pressure when it's business. So working overseas, not possible for everyone. Look at foreign banks as an example. When they hire new employees, what do they look for first? Language, language, language. Most people are fluent in two to three languages because business is easy to learn. Six months, a year, two years, but a language, no. So do you need these unwritten rules? Is your company global? Is your industry global? What about your customers? Or do you just want to speak to people, communicate well? If the answer is yes, then you need to learn these unwritten rules. Because this is what we're looking for here. Go you. We want to be comfortable and confident. You need to know the rules to play the game. That's all it is. It's very, very simple. But also, it takes time. The Olympics are coming, as Osawa-san said, right? And this is a big chance for Japan, a huge opportunity, not just for sports, but it's also for Japan to come out and be more competitive, not in just sports, but competitive in speaking to the world. It's a huge opportunity, and I really think that all you people here and more out in Japan, we need to make changes now. Lastly, things to remember, no apologies. <laughs> Speak with yo-yo. And remember, my English is good enough. It is. You have another option, these unwritten rules, and Thank you. I've, <laughs> I've written them in a book, and uh, if you get a chance, I'd love to talk to you about it because Japan studies too much English and not enough communication. Thank you very much. もののあの、いや、でも本当はその減り下ることがすっごいいいなと思います。ただ程度がありますからオーバーするとえと思いますよね。何でもそうだと思いますけど、それですよね。減り下ることがちょっとそのゲージがあればいいなと思いますよね。